Shriners Children's College Classic Bowl Song with game number six from Minute Maid Park. Outdoor baseball all weekend. And money has been raised for a great cause. Shriners Hospitals is the Rice Owls. After a win yesterday over Texas Tech, take on the 15th ranked Texas A&M Fighting Aggies. Hey, welcome up to the booth. I'm Brett Dolan. He's still Pat Combs. He's been here for each and every game. Wright's got a big win to kick off this classic yesterday, take it down Texas Tech, and Connor Walsh was involved in a lot. Yeah, he sure was. And uh, got Rice off to a great start, had that two-run home, two homer in the fourth inning that really got things started. And it is only his second year in a Rice uniform after transferring from Ole Miss. Connor Walsh has become one of the most consistent Owl hitters. Leads the team with four extra base hits. It was that two-run homer in the fourth that put him ahead with that early lead. And they held on for a 3-2 victory over Texas Tech. Indeed, nice win for the Rice Owls. Now, AM things did not go well for them last night. They were in danger of being run-ruled until this shot from Austin Boast. Yeah, that kept the game going. It extended against Louisville. And it was a big three-run home run. But uh, with most heating up, it really bodes well for the AM lineup. You know, he's uh, had a breakout season for the Aggies last year. Hit 360 with 10 home runs. Off to a bit of a slow start, but he's starting to heat up. Two home runs in his last two games. And batting cleanup this evening. It's the Texas A&M Aggies and the Rice House. Another great crowd expected. Minute Maid Park, game six. The Shriners Children's College Classic. Our starting lineups are first pitch straight ahead from downtown Houston. 2022 World Series champion. It's one thing to reach the pinnacle and another to hold the throne. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but we're used to the weight. We've built a legacy. Now let's cement the dynasty. We're ready. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Here at the Astros Foundation, we strive to harness the passion of our fans to be a force for good in our community. Through key fundraising efforts like our Community Leaders Program and the Diamond Dreams Gala, we're able to redistribute millions of dollars back to support the community that supports us all season long. Log on to astros.com slash foundation to find out how you can affect positive change in our community. Well, that's Matthew throwing out the first pitch before the nightcap here at the Shriners Children's College Classic. Well done. Beautiful Minute Maid Park, the site. Here's the starting lineup for Rice, brought to you by Texas Crown Whiskey. Jack Riddle, Pierce Gallo, Manny Garza, the top three. Good holder, Bach, Walsh, and Johnson. West, Rosengard, and Salazar, the starting nine. For Jose Cruz Jr., they're going to be going up against this AM left hander, Troy Wansing. Yeah, Wansing looks the part with the 6'4", 225-pound frame. He's a transfer from Purdue, making his third start in an Aggie uniform. You see the numbers. Had a rocky first start of the season, but uh, came back and was really sharp last weekend against Portland. Took the loss, but only gave up a couple of earned runs in that one. And he'll sit 92-95 with a fastball, curveball changeup, really still learning how to pitch young in his career. Here's your defensive alignment for the Texas A&M Aggies. See Ken at third base. We saw him at short and also left last night. Targach over at first base. Bard is getting the start behind the plate. His first start catcher. Working with Lonson. Can you tell the Aggie fans are here, by the way, tonight? <laughs> I mean, they're swaying and they're singing. Already up, having a good time here at Minute Maid. Aggie wore him as a cranker. 
And they're here in full force. A bunt attempt on the first pitch of the game. Had to throw the first by one thing. It's a quick out. Well, Rydell wanted to test Wansing early, see how fast he could bounce off the mound, and found out that he could field his position well. That punt was not in the direction he wanted it to go. He was trying to aim down the third base side, and too close to the pitcher's mound, and that was an easy out for Wansing. Here's Pierce Gallo. He's 13 for 29. He's reached base at 18 straight games going back to last year. to be popped up should find the well-populated section of Aggie fans. <laughs> Someone's very happy early. <laughs> Someone with a big cowboy hat go over us also gets a baseball, I think. Nice catch. Look at that. Well, for Wansing, you mentioned the Purdue transfer. Got to believe there was a little bit of an adjustment period. I mean, the crowds are thin to say the least early in the year in the Big Ten even if you get a home game it's not the case at Aguilar not at all that's one of the adjustments he's making is coach Schlossnagel said you know coming from Purdue it's a, it's a good program but you go to A&M it's a big time program pitching in the SEC and really for him to settle in with the bigger crowds and get understanding how to pitch now he made a recent mechanical adjustment so Worked on that, and then Nate Yeske, the pitching coach for AM, has moved him over to the left side of the rubber, trying to give him a little different angle towards the plate. Seems to be helping here in just a couple of starts this season. Did you experiment with that much, moving back and forth on that rubber? I did, but it, uh, I, I really like that left side. I was more comfortable there, and that's really where I stayed most of my career. It seemed like a hitter in the batter's box. You have your spot, and that's, that's right. That's where you get used to. Yeah, you also start to learn really how your pitches work from that particular angle off the rubber. And That's a soft little flare. A base hit for Gallo. He's on again. He played back in. And a one-out single has the owls in business. Yeah, Gallo really has picked up where he left off from last season. Had a strong finish. And he has hit his last seven games. Now make that eight. Here's Manny Garza, the catcher. He has 10 hits on this season. Four knocked in. Well, Rice with that big win yesterday, Brett. And, you know, you come into these tournaments every year, the Shriners Children's College Classic, and you look at it on paper and you say, well, you know, this is a team, Rice, that's coming in struggling and really trying to kind of get that rhythm back to where they were four or five years ago. And, and they come in and face a really hot Texas Tech team, 10-0. You go, know, well, you have to just hope Bryce can stay in the game. Well, they, they win yesterday, now starting to build some momentum. There's a ground ball to second. Can the Aggies get two? Taylor made 4-6-3. DP ends the top of the first inning. So a hit for the double play. And the fight Aggies coming into the mound. It's been a long-standing narrative that the Rockets moved from San Diego to Houston for you. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Well, that is true. That that I know when uh, Wayne Dulleston and all when they put a, a group together, they said we're doing this for you, Elvin. They were giving the Padres everything they wanted, and but Mr. Barbot, they did not give him parking or uh, do anything for the arena out there and so he felt that hey you if you're not going to do anything for me then i'm going to sell the team and just so happened the group from houston they were ready he called me and he said elvin do you want to go back to houston and it ended up being a great deal for me you know for the rockets coming from san diego to houston
Astros take on Venezuela Wednesday at 4.30 on AT&T Sportsnet. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Texas A&M. Brought to you by Centex. A little different looking this evening. Tracy Haas than Moss. Post the cleanup hitter. Targach at first. Bob Gillette in right. Kent will play at third. Bard gets to start behind the plate. Jason Wells in left field batting ninth. And they'll be taking a look at Rice right-hander Mauricio Rodriguez. Yeah, 6'2", 218 pounds sophomore. He's a transfer from Calhoun Community College and only making his third career start at the D1 level. He was looking to follow the strong start yesterday of Parker Smith. He got the win versus Tech, but Rodriguez has been a consistent presence in this Rice rotation since joining the Owls. And yeah, he's given up 13 hits in nine in the third innings, but only three earned runs while striking out 10 and walking four. Here's the defense behind him. Salazar Walsh, Rosengard in the outfield. Rydell Johnson, Gallo, Holderbach around the diamond. Garza behind the plates. Tab Tracy in center field is going to lead off. Five for ten on this young season. And he's going to take a pitch in there for strike one. Rodriguez fastball sit 88 to 91. So he's not going to blow you away with heat, but really good arm side run. Great sink to the fastball. And he throws the two seam fastball and sports a curveball change up. There's a change up there to tab Tracy to get quickly ahead 0 2. Pretty good athleticism just to catch that ball coming back to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tracy had a double yesterday in the seventh inning, and you were thinking, well, that's cute, right? It's 14 to nothing. Well, he got a double, then there was a sack fly to single and a three run homer. And what looked like a seven inning game, maybe 14 nothing or one or two, was 14 5, and we played it to completion. There you go, yeah. We thought we were going to get out here a tad early yesterday, but uh, Tab had something yeah, to do with did. that. You're right. <laughs> well done. Swinging a foul. I, mean, I like what uh, Coach Schlossagel's doing with this lineup. He's, you know, really trying to juggle some pieces here early in the season. The Aggies have yet to really put the offense together like they did last season, but I mean, not uh, have to remind Aggie fans what a slow start they had out of the gate. 22 ends up in the College World Series and. And just like that in the 23 season, it's a similar start. It is frustrating, however. I know you don't have the benefit of perspective sometimes a couple of weeks in. And as Schloss said, you know, this is a group that wants to win. They want to please. And you have to worry about over trying. And, you know, a lot goes into it. I don't know at what point you start to panic a little more. And, and you don't have quite the outlook. Whether that's three weeks in or whether that's... 11 12 games. I know the Aggies would certainly enjoy some good offensive numbers in these last two Well, that's the thing you're looking for some consistency You're looking for guys to start to put together quality at bats Time and again, and that's what he has not seen so far from the bulk of the lineup So again, you're gonna throw some guys out there that uh, maybe Well, that was close. It was just close. missed the inside corner You're gonna throw some guys in the lineup that you, you believe in that think you're gonna have a shot to get it put together but you're right, at some point, you've got to kind of come up with a consistent lineup so guys know their roles and start to get more comfortable. Mm, that was real close. Next pitch is Tomahawk on the ground towards Gallo, a bobble, and a will take the base runner. Gallo got caught between hops. Yeah, sure did. Yeah, didn't want to sit back with uh, Tab Tracy's speed, so I had to come up and try to short hop it. That ball just skips off the palm of his glove. Sinfielders like short hops and big hops. They don't like those, the in-betweens. That was a good battle with Rodriguez and Tracy. Looked like it was going to be an easy out, but instead turns into base runner for the Ags. So Hunter Haas, the batter. He said a couple of runs knocked in, nine base hits. Plate umpire this evening is Clint Fagan. Ronnie Teague at third, Joe Harris at first, Ray Gregson at second. That ball blistered the gap in right center field. Walsh chasing. He won't get there. Tracy's off to the races. He's going to be waved in. The throw to the play is late. AM scores first on a double from Hunter Haas. And then Air cashed in for a run immediately. Yeah, great at bat by Hunter Haas. Just went up there hacking at a fastball and gets one elevated. One of the first mistakes we've made, Rodriguez has made out over the middle of the plate. And by cutting this ball off here by Walsh, she gave 
Rice at least a chance maybe for a play at the plate. Yeah, it was a great relay throw, just a bit high. And I think Tracy would have beat it anyway, but good job by the Owls to get that ball back into the infield quickly. Here's Jack Moss. Rolls one on the ground. Gallo gets another try. They'll scoop and throw out Moss here as Haas goes to third now with one out. Well, that's one of those sacrifices that won't go down as a sack, but Moss do the job, hit the ball to the right side of the ground and advancing Hunter Haas to third base. Yeah, I like these uniforms tonight for AM. That old classic look, yeah, right? Yeah, that old school look. Austin Bose, the batter, hitting of the three-run homer into the first row of the Crawford box yesterday. He found out what so many big leaguers have known for a long time. You get one airborne to left, you got a chance. Get it over that wall and maybe get a home run that in most other big league ballparks would be in somebody's glove and left. That's it. Take advantage of the elements when they provide the opportunity. They're both really starting to heat up. Set a grand slam and a three-run homer in his last two games. He has a chance here with a fly ball, maybe even a ground ball to just about anybody. Maybe to pick up another run batted in. Yeah, the Owls defense playing back up the middle. Drew Holderbach is in close, tight at first. Jack Rydell playing about even with the bag at third. Straight foul down the line and right. Into and out of the second level, back downstairs. With that massive Aggie fans. By the way, the Aggies celebrating a big basketball win today in College Station so early this morning. Beat Alabama. Took down Alabama. Good job. Some buzz around Buzz. He's got that team playing well. That pitch a little bit outside. Andrew Monaco, the radio guy, he was here last night, drove home to the basketball game, then he came back. I told him last night in the seventh inning we would excuse him if he just wanted to say, tell his listeners to go to Astros.com or AT&T Sportsnet <laughs> and just start driving He back. made for the play. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Got to give the pass. Two and two to boast. That one goes to the backstop. No carom as well for Garza. Haas scores easily. 2 nothing a and in the wild pitch across the line. Yeah, Rodriguez tried to go change up to boast and just kind of stuck to his hand and pulled it across his body. We saw Manny Garza down in that low stance. It's uh, great for trying to pick up balls and strikes, but not very good for blocking no. pitches. And we're not able to extend to put a glove on it. He took a spill near the backstop yeah, as well. Did. Post sends one down the line and right. This is trouble. Going to drop in for extra bases. Post will cruise to second as Rosengard plays it back to the infield. Couple of doubles for a and here in the first. I was curious tonight, Pat, if they would come out really swinging it. It's kind of been an every other game scenario for them over the last few. Yeah, no doubt. But you can't keep great offensive lineups down for too long. I mean, we saw that happen with Tech. You know, Rice beat them 3-2 yesterday. They came out swinging this morning. Knocked the ball around a bit. Picked up a big win in the first game today, 10-7 over Michigan. And Yeah, you kind of felt the same way for the Aggies. Kind of bottled up yesterday, and it was just going to be a matter of time before these bats started to, to take off for them. That's Ryan Targach, first baseman. 214 average with a home run. That's laced to right center field. Another base hit, another run's going to come across. Targach, he's going to keep on rumbling. That ball wasn't fielded cleanly, and that's going to be a triple. And the ball kicks away. Targach is out of gas. He said that's enough. Three bases. <laughs> it's 3 nothing. a and well, This is a great piece of hitting again. Rodriguez is missing out over the plate. Pitches have good life and good movement, but uh, just catching too much of the dish. And Targach makes him pay for that. Yeah, a little bit of a bump in the outfield between Rosengard and Walsh on who was going to take it. It uh, allows Targosh to take the extra bag. Now we're going to have a visit coaching staff that's going to be pitching coach Parker Banks trying to settle his starter Rodriguez down it didn't start well with the air at second base no. but certainly last uh, few hits have been double double triple and Rodriguez just missing catching too much of that plate so going into the seventh inning last night 
A&M was trailing 14 to nothing, and they had a grand total of two hits. Well, tonight, the first inning, we're far from done. They have three extra base hits. Yeah, that's called taking your frustration out on the next opponent. Unfortunately for Rice, it's, it's them. So at the moment, the Yankees taking a big lead here in the first inning. He's trying to get Rodriguez settled in. And he is from Revere, Massachusetts. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Well, can't wait. Oh, some Massachusetts trivia. Here's Chase. Love you, let. Started to swing, but took a strike. Yeah, he caught on the swing. So I was talking a few years ago to head coach at Kansas State now, Coach Hughes, and that ball almost gets away. So we were talking about uh, where we were from, and I said, well, my family's from the Boston area in Revere on my mom's side. And he said, really, I'm, I'm from Brockton just down the street. We were big-time rivals. He said, so your family's from Revere? I said, yeah. He goes, man, that's a tough neighborhood. <laughs> if you're from Revere, I know you're a tough guy. That's a funny thing. I was going to say the same thing about Brockton. They're known for their, their you got boxers. It. They'll drop it, right? <laughs> Two balls and a strike to La Violette. Now we know Rodriguez is a tough guy, but can he work out of this this mess here in the first inning? Ground ball foul outside of first. I'm curious at all about conceding another run right out of the gates. Are they obviously intent upon just getting the second out? But even a ground ball would make this four nothing. Yeah, it's, it's still early here, Brett. I think you know you you don't have only got four runs in the first inning, but you know you've got plenty of time to get back in this game. So Rice is uh, keeping their infield back at the moment. Rodriguez could use a strikeout. This is up and out. Guys going full. This will be the 24th pitch already in this bottom of the first. Just missed. Wow. My goodness. Ball four. Well, it's not the worst thing that can happen. He sets up a dull play. And that's how the Owls will manage it defensively. They'll play back up the middle. Keen can in. Son of Jeff. Former Astro. Former Giant. One of those guys you look at and you wonder why he's not getting more Hall of Fame votes. And that one sprayed foul. Jeff was a tough guy, and I know Caden is as well. It was a few years ago, probably closer to 10, where Astros had one of their anniversary seasons, and Jeff Kent came back, sat in with us on radio, and he could not have been better, to the point where I said, you need to be doing this. <laughs> you know, he's enjoying living in, in Texas and raising these kids. But it was a completely different personality than we got to see when he was playing. Yeah. Well, he had that mentality, and he kind of earned that reputation. You know, just a tough-nosed guy that wanted to beat you every day. He wanted to beat you every day, and he would not let up. And you know, I knew from, from stories about the clubhouse when you know guys weren't taking the game serious. And that's the kind of leadership you want. Must be fun, though, to see your son play in a ballpark where you had some success oh, as man. well. Yeah, what a thrill for the entire Kent family. And he was a big-time prospect, this Caden. And you know, Schloss sure loves him. He says, hey, he's just got that, you know, potential written all over him. And, of course, playing in the outfield to start the season for AM and and Schloss says it's just a matter of time before he gets to the infield. Well, tonight he is. They're playing third base, but his typical position is shortstop but he is a versatile athlete and they've been able to move him around an injury to Brett Minnick in the first at bat of the season created a little bit of early adversity for AM. and one ball and two strikes sprayed foul at the edge of the rice dugout propelling out to the outfield You could imagine, right? Some has some activity going in their bullpen. 
Rodriguez on his 29th pitch still looking for a second out gotten this Kent to go down on strikes they've been foul tipped into the glove of Garza but there's two gone yeah nice breaking ball coming down and in towards that back's foot a nasty slider from Rodriguez and kind of winds Kent up under these teams using that wristband that Pitchcom device. Hank Bard getting the start, steps in. A couple of advance, couple of hits, and four advance this year. Yeah, up close it looks like a kind of an Apple Watch. But the uh, pitch pitches come from the dugout. And just a pitching coaches have the uh, piece that they can signal the pitch in. Of course, catcher and pitcher both have those watches now. I've seen Vanderbilt, Brett. They every player on the field has that That's watch. Right. Yeah. Here, I think only uh, pitcher and catcher for Rice are using it. I saw a handoff last night from the reliever. Says if to say, nope, give that. That's right. <laughs> that to me. We don't have an unlimited amount of those things. Ground ball, right to short. Good positioning there. Johnson takes it to the bag to force Bobby Alec ends the inning. Good beginning for the Aggies. They put three on the board. Reviews are in, and everyone loves Season Pass from TXU Energy. 50% off your energy charges all winter and summer. What's not to love? I saved $450 last year. Half off for half the year is a real crowd pleaser. Even when the weather's changing, I'm still saving. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. You can say that again. Season Pass is relief when you need it most. I didn't mean literally. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. 2022 World Series champion! It's one thing to reach the pinnacle and another to hold the throne. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but we're used to the weight. We've built a legacy. Now, let's cement the dynasty. We're ready. life-changing care to children who need your help by logging on to collegeclassic.org and for each $100 donation you get a free Marucci mini bag with a $250 or more donation get a free full-size Marucci bat go to collegeclassic.org and donate today we've had one of these bats up in the booth all weekend this is what you get for $250 Jacob Berry from LSU last year good looking piece of lumber that is a great piece of lumber I I got myself one of these. I donated 250, and I challenge everybody I'm watching to do the same. This is a collector's item. It is a great bat that Marucci put out. They donate these bats. All the proceeds go to Triner's Children's College Classic. You can contribute for a good cause and get yourself a nice souvenir. Rice would like to get a couple of runs. Drew Holderbach going to step in to begin this second inning. He had hit in eight straight games before yesterday. Once he needed just 10 pitches to get through the first. It was a much different situation in the bottom of the frame. Wave and a miss. And a good sinking fastball from Wansing. It's going to be lifted back and into the upper tank to our right. That didn't last long. Bounces downstairs. Everybody tracking down that baseball. Fan came up with it. Another one served down the line and left. Bending into the corner. And that is a fair ball. Holderbach has extra bases. And he's not going to be stopped at second. He shouldn't have stopped at second base. 
That ball carried all the way back towards Boast. And he was content to lead off the second with a double. Yeah, it was a tough uh, road down in the right field corner there for Boast for LaViolette. That ball hit high off the wall, just missed going out by about a foot. Right, by the time uh, LaViolette could get to it, Older back was at second base, and you're right. I think you could have had third. That ball came off the wall and took him a while to track it down. Just kept rolling and yeah. rolling. It's kind of Walsh. I know you don't want to make the first out of third base down three nothing, but that seemed to be a free base. Featured Walsh in the open his home run yesterday. 32 starts last season for Walsh. That's a full swing. No need for an appeal. Joe Harris over there at first. Finished the season strong and a good beginning to this year. It's a little bit in. Last year was one of those seasons for Rice. You're just trying to find a few answers and start to build that foundation back up against her once proud program under Jose Cruz Jr. Kind of unusual when Chris Jr. got this job for Rice. He was on the staff of A.J. Hinch with the Detroit Tigers. That's right. They yeah. also had Chip Hale on that staff who left mid-year to take the job at his alma mater at Arizona. He had a couple of guys leaving midstream, and that's ball four, to go take over the college jobs, which a head coaching job now in the college ranks is better than being a coach on a big league staff. Yeah, especially if, uh, if you're a bench coach, for Absolutely. sure. Yeah, they're, they're, they're paying much better, and you now the, the difference is when you come back to college, you've, you've got to recruit, and that's where Paul Yanish and, and Jose Cruz Jr. know that they have to work really hard to rebuild the recruiting piece of this wise baseball. Oh, well, nearly all pick off at first. Walsh just did get back in. Targots was scrambling. It looked like he was spinning his wheels for a moment. See how far Targotch is from first, but he's winning the race right here. That throw, though, I think it drilled. I did. Walsh. It hit Walsh, yeah. Around the back side, but. Well, Johnson pulled the bat back and took strike two. Yeah, good breaking ball from Wansing. Well, you're right. The recruiting part's the tough one, right? You've been in the pro game. Now you got to come back. You're recruiting the 15 and 16 year olds. Got to jump back in the circuit. Know the travel teams. That's going to be a wave and a miss. So Johnson, the Indiana transfer, carved up. Big first down of the inning. And I want to see right back to the breaking ball. And not a productive at bat for Johnson. Right there to butt. And, uh, swings a strike three, not even close. Yeah, getting back to that conversation with Jose Cruz Jr. And, you know, the most interesting part of that, you think about when Wayne Graham took over the Rice program in 1992 and who was his first major sign Cruz Jr. So really kind of a big circle the way this has happened with uh, Cruz taking over as, as the head man like that symmetry yeah he's at a Beller high school one of the top recruits in the country and uh, Wayne Graham convinced him to come to Rice and, and Rice put together some of the best ranked recruiting you know for Gosh, the next probably 10 years, they were in the top 20 every year. There's no doubt about that. Nothing in the West. We'll talk more about the 20th anniversary of their championship team a little bit later on. Just name after name that you'll recognize either from the college ranks or from uh, their pro careers. That's how you get a championship team. And, and, of course, Cruz Jr. was the third overall pick for the Seattle Mariners coming out of Rice. That's right. His assistant coach, recruiting coordinator, Paul Yanish, a Rice guy through and through, played at Rice as well, played 13 years professionally, came back, married his wife, who was a Rice soccer player. So these two guys are uh, Rice owls through and through, and they're looking to get that program back to national prominence. Two balls, two strikes to West. Wansing working around that double and walk, got a strikeout, but he will get another K as West will go fishing and there's two outs and that breaking ball from Wansing is just nasty great downward tilt these rice owls having problems picking up that spin that's 
two hitters in a row that have swung over the top of that pitch and not even close. Nice job by Barr to scoop that on one bounce. Benjamin Rosengard, one for nine with the bat in there from the left side. McLennan Juco Products, Chicago native. Okay, right now, Watson's just pumping strikes. Yeah, and carving up hitters. Good mixture of low 90s fastball, that big breaking curveball. Here comes another one. You're right. That's a strong finish to that inning. Great pitch. Rough start, but man, he put it on. That adjustment by Nate Yeski, his pitching coach, is paying dividends here early on for Wansing. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing brace with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me paddle, carve, and drop in. The water is my canvas. Let the good times begin. Perfect sets and barrels I chase. Where sand becomes surf, waves set the pace. A childhood accident couldn't ruin my vibes. Thanks to one special place, I've never been more alive. Watch me. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Leads. Take on any challenge. When you have the number one brand in dependability, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Kia, movement that inspires. The champs return to Minute Maid Park, ready to rain. Opening day versus the Chicago White Sox is March 30th. Get your tickets, get to the game early for opening day Street Fest, presented by Budweiser. For tickets, visit Astros.com slash tickets today. That's a Thursday. I think every big league team is opening on that very same day. Wow. That's a first. I've never heard that. Used to be you'd have an opener, then you'd have an off day in case that first one That's was That's exactly right, yeah. Yeah. Now we don't care. Now we're just going <laughs> to kick <laughs> Everybody's going to play. We have a lot of dome stadiums. That helps, too. <laughs> just too. Yep. Is Casey Wells, who sprays one foul to begin the bottom of the second. Well, a 30-pitch inning in the first for Mauricio Rodriguez, so he needs to have a quick one. On the ground is short. Good by Johnson. That's a quick first down. As Wells is retired. And a good start for the Rice right-hander. There's Tab Tracy. He reached on an air by Gallo at second to begin the game. And, uh, kick started a three-run inning. Stratford Houston product. Tell you what, if you're a sports fan in Houston, this city has just become incredible for hosting big events. We've had the Super Bowl and obviously the World Series last year, opening weekend, also the Final Four at NRG with game Saturday and then that Monday for the championship. Next year will be the college football playoff championship here yeah. at NRG. You got the rodeo going on currently, right? Rodeo's going on. You and I need to build a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> we need to finance a large hotel. We're gonna we're gonna really gouge people too yeah. in our race. You find the location. I'll uh, I'll go in with you. <laughs> Pitch is inside to Tracy. It's three and one. Might need a financier of some sort. <laughs> I mean, know we've got the business plan. A nice hotel. We're gonna charge a lot, but the rest the rest is just detail. Yeah, I know a guy. We can do this. <laughs> three one pitch. That's elevated. That's ball four. And the Aggies have a one out base runner in the second inning. Oh, a little 
jumbled the top of the order for the Aggies, and so far it seems to be working. Tab Tracy in that leadoff spot tonight, knocked Hunter Haas down a notch. Haas had been the leadoff hitter for most of the Aggies' games to start this season. Arizona State transfer. That's the one step off that Rodriguez gets in that sequence. And rolls in a little bit high for ball one. Yeah, Haas, one of those really patient hitters. Schloss says he really does a good job of staying up the middle with pitches and doesn't try to do too much. He's this one of those prototypical leadoff guys, even though he's in the two hole tonight. That was a hit and run with Tracy off and running. That's the other thing that Haas will give you is the ability to use him in, as a situational type hitter, such a great contact hitter. Put him in that tool, and you say we're going to hit and run right out of the gates. Easy flip to first, and Tracy has not attempted a steal, able to get back in easily. So going from the pack to the SEC, and that one sprayed foul down the line and right. It's amazing, I think, if, you know, I'm in the SEC a lot. They take care of their region. They don't lose a lot of players outside their foundation. But the number of players you see from California who are also coming south and west because of the number of games on TV, because of the weekend crowds. Last year, there were four teams from the same division in the SEC in Omaha. Yeah. That ball's picked out of the dirt. The throw to first, though, with Chase Tracy back. I don't underestimate the number of games on TV. I, I think, to me, that is just something. You know every home game's going to be on TV. Every oh, yeah. road game's going to be. You know, you're going to get these, these great events. And it doesn't hurt when you flip on the regionals or the super regionals and you see the Aggie crowd, for example, or the hog pen in Arkansas, or the LSU fans in Baton Rouge. Yeah, what's those SEC schools? SEC schools averaging, what, 12, 15,000 fans a game. And that's big time baseball. You know, I've coached a number of players, Brett, over the years that went on to these uh, Power Five schools and had a tremendous experience, but then they get drafted and they go to eight ball and they go, Man, this stinks. <laughs> These long bus rides and you know, staying in crummy hotels. This is not like when I was at AM or you know, LSU. It is a massive difference. Oh, that that helmet right off the head of Hunter Hawks. Yeah. Glenn Fagan will circle behind Hoss just to make sure he's on his way to first. Jim Schloss dangled out there to see if uh, his shortstop's okay. I mean, that took the helmet right off his head. Yeah, thank goodness for helmets, but uh, yeah, breaking ball just gets away from Rodriguez. Oh, man, that just ear holding. <laughs> so so yeah, turn that head just a notch where it was still a pretty solid blow. And Jack Moss will be the batter. To your point, though, Pat, you're right. You play in front of 34,000 people in a weekend on a chartered flight. All games are on TV. You go to A ball, you're on a bus. There's a few thousand people there. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. The crowd's not as invested. It is just a massively different scope, not to mention the facilities and the indoor and the weight rooms and everything they yeah. now have at these schools. That's a total different experience. And but, uh, hats off to the schools that are investing in baseball. You love to see that. And the hope around college sports is always that you offer the opportunity for kids to get their, their grades and get their, you know, get their school taken care of. That's your preseason West Paul. What did Schloss joke with us on one of the services had his team like fifth in the country but fourth in their division? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> 2 on pitch hit hard. How did he get that through the real estate between Gallo and Holderbach? Moss has the hit. Tracy is going to score. It's a 4 nothing game. There wasn't much real estate where Moss hit it, but when you blister it off the bat, get a single in an RBI. You're exactly right. Gallo was pulled over in the hole and went second first, and 
Well, there's not a lot of room there between him and Holdenback, and he shoots it through there. It's a well-struck ball. Off the bat of Moss, he'll pick up the RBI, and the Yankees pick up their fourth run. Garza out to the mound. This might be about the end of the night for Rodriguez if Jose Cruz Jr. wants to make a pitching change. I think it's coming. Yeah, he's out of the dugout. Rice will make a change. Both of our head coaches wearing number 22 tonight, Cruz Jr. and Jim Schlossnagel. Cruz Jr. is going to make that call to the bullpen. We'll step aside. We'll be right back. A&M onto a 4 nothing lead. thought much of his credit scores. Well, until he got Credit Karma and used his scores to move on up. By putting in the work to improve his scores, he got access to a better credit card. And that sofa she liked. Ooh, is that Saffron Sunrise? And when it came time to buy a home of his own, Credit Karma helped him take things to the next level. Just in time. Credit Karma. Download the free money app where your hard work pays off. Texans are saving big with TXU Energy Season Pass. 50% off energy charges all winter and summer. I saved $450 last year. Best move I ever made. You still got it, Dad. You've also got the TXU Energy app, where you can track your savings anytime. Now that's a win. And that's a big win. You keep dancing, I'll keep saving. With Season Pass, everybody wins. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. Pitching changes are brought to you by Honda. New pitcher is Riley Urbancic. And how about this young man from College Station, Texas, pitching yeah, against there the on the big stage. Yeah, how about that? A shot against a team you probably grew up either rooting for or at least to participate in some of those Aggie games. Urbancic making his third appearance. His four innings under his belt. He had a couple of burn runs on six hits and five strikeouts. No walks. Fastball curveball changeup. Still plenty of game left here for Rice. If Vansic can limit the damage. And the College Station High School product ready to face Austin Bose. Doesn't get much easier. Heart of the lineup now for AM. You know, the one thing we talked about last night with a &M, whether momentum is only as good as the next day's pitcher or whether there's belief, even if it's 14 nothing, you have some good swings at the end. You have something to maybe keep you from staring at the ceiling all night thinking about an 0 for 3 or an 0 for 4 if there's some carryover. Well, they had the last five runs last night, the first four this evening as they've come out swinging and taking advantage of an error or a free base runner. A couple of extra base hits then behind them. Yeah, it kind of felt like there was a little bit of momentum shift last night. Aggies uh, bullpen came in and shut the hot hitting Cardinal lineup down those last number of innings. And a big home run by Boast certainly has carried over to today. He doubled and scored back in the first. Trying to really put Rice behind the eight ball. This is the eighth time these teams have met at Minute Maid, but the first time since 2014, so it has been a while. Rice has not been involved in this event quite as often as the TCUs or the Texas A&Ms or LSUs of the world. Got a big win yesterday. Trying to get out of a jam here in the second. And the count to an oak. Well, he's staring down that bat. Going to post his pre-pitch routine. That pitch up and out, 3 at home. Post a preseason second team selection in the SEC. 
That's the 100 career RBI plateau in that 23 nothing win over HCU on Tuesday. A good friend Lance Berkman wasn't even there. That's okay. right. We missed that one. Pitch is high. That's ball four. And the bases are full of Aggies. And here comes the chant. Yeah, first walk of the year given it by Urbancic. And <laughs> fastball 91 92, but so far unable to locate it. Got to get these fans invested early. One more <laughs> ball and they'll get louder and louder. So if you're Urbancic, you want to strike here. And I think Targoc knows that. Otherwise, these fans will increase with their volume yeah. with each miss and pitch. That's a way to miss. That'll quiet him for the time being. Targot's tripled in a run just last inning. The pitch way inside. A ball and a strike. Dane M's first baseman. Maybe just trying to overthrow a tad against the Aggies here. The hometown guy pitching against College Station based Aggies. His heart has to be beaten. Oh, man. Any scenario, just pitching in this ballpark, coming on with base runners against a top 10 type team, but then it's the team just a few miles from where you went to high school. Sport the same colors as well. One out in the inning. Out right of the plate. Rose was retired quickly on a bounce out to short. Since then, walk, hit batter, RBI single, and walk. Rice would love a ground ball right at an infielder. And not that one. On the ground again. In the right base hit. It's going to score a run, maybe two. Here comes the throw. Cut off. It's 6-0 Texas A&M. That's three runs back in for Targax. And once again, a ball with eyes between Gallo and Holderbach hit well. But again, not a lot of room between the two. Yeah, gets the fastball down in. Targos just turns on it. Oh, the Yankees are obviously mixing in some doubles, triples, now singles that are finding holes and just keep adding to this lead. Now 6 0. Texas AM. Bob Gillette, next man in. That's a nice little banner that young man's got. Off his hands, foul to the left, and out of play. One of the reasons why Texas A&M kind of moved their lineup around just a bit is that uh, I think Werner's a bit under the weather. He's got him. Well, those big time prospects stand 6-5. He's a freshman who can run, obviously has some big pop and a lot of potential, but Coach Flosh says this is a guy I'm just gonna stick with him, even if he's off to a slow start, because he's just got that high ceiling. I mean, you look at him right there, he doesn't look like he's 18 years old, does he? I mean, if you go into a lab and say, diagram me up a big time looking power hitter, that's probably what you come up with. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see the excitement of just the, the room to grow as he develops. And, you know, he's got the body, but can continue to develop. I was having a hard time getting a sign in. I don't know if that watch is working for Garza. He keeps pointing to us. They're going to go the old-fashioned yeah. way. Well, and there's a time it took too long. Yeah, it took too long and didn't figure out what's going on with the, the pitch cut. Garza keeps saying either I didn't get the sign on my watch. It's not working. Or it's not working. Yeah. And that's going to be an issue. See if he puts down the old-fashioned sign. Apparently, it's now functioning. Well, the technology is great when it works, right? <laughs> it's like every 50 
year old and older saying, how do I get the iPhone to do what? Who? <laughs> how do we stream this? <laughs> I'm sure every team has a backup when those pitch comms go down. I did a football game this year at Stanford right out of the gates, USC and Stanford, and they had all the you know, first down markers and this camera, and I thought, can we find any technology in this area? <laughs> Here's Caden Kent, this time fielded by Gallo. It's an unusual play over at first, but Kent retired, another run will score. That's the third ground ball that the Aggies have hit in that hole between second and first. This time, the Owls able to come up with it. Gallo was pulled over towards that hole. Then he had to find a first baseman or somebody to throw to. Yeah, Holderbach had vacated trying to go after the ball and he was able to get back to position and make the out. This is Hank Bard. He is the ninth Aggie to bat in this second inning. A three-run frame, now a four-run inning. Nice hoping they can get the final out and in this stretch. And I like that Shriners logo on the back of the helmets. Yeah, it's ran out. Great addition. Good branding. Same logo you see in the back of the mound. Just missed in. inside. Well, the stuff is there for Bansick. It's you know, just the command issues at the moment. Falling behind the hitters and I'm going to give in. Came in having not walked a batter. Now he's walked a couple this inning. There's a pick of third. Rydell had to make sure he played that like a catcher. He did. He had no chance to tag the sliding Tarjok, but just keeping that ball from going to the outfield. Nice job by the third baseman Rydell. To take this off his chest. Now Garza's got a cannon. He loves to show it off, but He's a great throw on catch. Yeah. That pitch just misses. All four. So that means Case and Wells, who started this inning by grounding out, is going to bat again. You know he doesn't want to make the second out, but Bryce would take any out to end it. And the chant begins again. Didn't have quite the intensity right now. Maybe it's Blue Bell Park, but another couple of pitches out of the zone. And They'll get in the spirit of things. Yeah, the rhythm starts to build. If, uh, it does. Can't find the strike zone. Bit here. of a crescendo. There's a crescendo. <laughs> <laughs> there they go. Just missed. Let's listen in. I have a feeling Urbanzik's been a part of this chant a few times. Yeah. Now he's the uh, victim. I wonder what the highest number they've uh, ever recorded for this uh, chant. Listen to this now. Bansick's going to try and break their mojo by going for a walk. Yeah, it's just didn't have a lot of time with these pitch clocks. You do not. What are we up to? Seven? Oh, eight. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's uh, one of 
those uh, young moments of your pitching career that most pitchers go through where coaches uh, kind of got to hit the drill a little bit. We call this motivation in coaching. I'm just trying to motivate my play. There's some motivation going on. Yeah, I say that. Probably a chance as well to uh, allow the bullpen a few more throws in case the can't get out of it. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> to tab Tracy. Well, at least the fans got a workout. They did. Tracy has reached on an air. He has walked. He scored two times already. He's at the plate for the third time, and we're in the second inning. Good pitch there. Catches the part of the plate. Run frame, bases full of Aggies. I think the one thing these AM hitters are trying to do, especially these lefties, they're trying to take away that inside point as best they can by crowding that plate. No doubt. And that's uh, where you have to have the command with that pitch to straighten the hitters back up. If you're going to crowd, you going to be able to pitch both sides of the plate. You want to come in here. Spray foul. That was a good fastball in on his hands. That should open up the outside. There's a change up here. Go back to the fastball. We'll try to back door the break. Two balls, two strikes. There we go. Strike three. A strikeout ends the inning. AM got five runs in the inning on two singles. Being the new face of Don't Mess With Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. Thanks. I'll never litter, Joe. Don't Mess With Texas means don't litter. Hey, oh! K.J. Martin climbed Bobon Mountain and blocked him at the apex. Oh yeah, Boban. We talked about it. He asked me the other day. I told him I was sorry. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mean to block him. I didn't mean to hurt his feelings. But no, I told Boban that's what I had to do. We were on different teams at the time, so I wasn't going to just let you dunk it. But no, it was a, that was a funny moment. Now that he's on my team, we always talk about it. I was going to say, teammates. Now, all right, what's one of your goals, personal goals for this season? Oh, uh, personal goals. I really want to try to average a block a game. I feel like I'm close, but just averaging a block a game. That's a big thing for me. I feel like I block shots. I get big time blocks, but on a consistent game, like I want to get a block a game. Like I just, for some reason, I don't know why. Obviously, to win as much games as possible. Like these last two years with the Rockets, obviously, we playing the right way and keep getting to know each other. Like we're all young. We're all going to have up and downs and we're going to grow together and uh, push this thing through. Astros spring training action on AT&T Sportsnet. Six remarkable kids have each teamed up with the participating university for the Shriners Children's College Classic Team Fundraising Challenge. All weekend long teams will compete to see which fan base can raise the most money in support of Shriners Children's. Go online to collegeclassic.org to donate in honor of your favorite team today. It is eight to nothing. Texas A&M as we go to the third inning. Christian Salazar is going to lead off against Troy Watson, who has had quite a couple of stretches on the bench while his teammates have provided him some support. 
Yeah, long innings, and sometimes that can be the challenge for a pitcher that's been sitting for so long. Just getting back into your rhythm and see how Wansing handles that long half inning. Let's see if Salazar can get on the board. 0 for 13 to start his season. That should drift and be at a play. Sign Range High School product is Christian Salazar. And one of those freshmen that Jose Cruz Jr. is really high on says, you know, he's got this great defensive abilities. You know, he's still trying to get on track offensively, but one of those players he feels like has a lot of tools that just needs to be developed. There's some similarities between Rice and Michigan we saw earlier today. Rice in the second year under Jose Cruz Jr., but they were at a much lower point in the program than was Michigan when Tracy Smith took over with that team coming off Big Ten Championship last year. But uh, you're going to play a lot of young kids to kind of yeah. find out what you've got. Yeah, that's exactly right. You, know, you take over a program, and sometimes players leave and hit the portal, and you're stuck with uh, you know, a roster that has to be rebuilt. Paul Yanish made the call that said, hey, you know, we've we understand what we're into here. And Jose Cruz Jr. and he have a great relationship. He said, you know, I'm more the, the vocal one. Jose's a little bit less vocal, but uh, great leadership abilities, and the players have really responded well to him. And so he said, hey, it's going to take us a couple of recruiting classes to get going. Yeah, but they really feel confident, especially with all the talent here in the Houston area. Well, almost a base hit. Let's see if this play can be made. Salazar is going to beat it out. Haas gave a tremendous effort. Salazar gets the hit. Yeah, Haas did a great job just getting to that ball. And he's not able to get to his feet quick enough and try to throw it from, from the knee. Yeah, well struck off the bat of Salazar. And, and that's a tough throw. I would say this about playing young players, Pat, and you know this as well as anybody. Jack Rydell bats. Because maybe... It's hard to kind of win early in those recruiting cycles when you take over a job. Maybe you're not big into the portal. You don't mind playing your young kids that you feel like have promise. You just don't want them to really take a beating from a confidence standpoint. That's right. Yeah, there's there's a point there where you have to think about the mental side of the game and the effects of you know not having success. And so that's uh that's one thing that these coaches monitor closely and you know, for a guy like Salazar collecting his first hit, you hope that now that kind of is the beginning of something special here for him. He put some good at-bats together. Dell tried to bunt on the first pitch of the game, but rolled one right back to Watson. Swing a foul right of the plate. These teams already have a home-and-home home schedule this year. They weren't originally scheduled to play at this event, but, you know, the Shriner schedule had to be adjusted to add a game and I think there were some travel issues and whatnot, so everything kind of got thrown up in the air. And we know that A&M and, and Jim Schlossnagel just didn't want to play TCU, and he's up front about it. He's got a lot of guys on that TCU roster. Yeah. He knows well. You know, if they're going to meet the Super, that's one thing. He didn't want to play if he didn't have right. to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he made that... Uh... Made that clear to the Shriners folks and just said, hey, look, you know, I just uh, don't want to play uh, my former team. It's it's not the right time yet. That's strike three. Late break. Uh, and asked locked him. up right in. Well, we get the, the old, some of the old Southwest Conference matchups here with uh, Rice and Texas A&M. Rice, and Texas Tech yesterday. There's a sharp breaking ball from Wansley. Watch how much Bart has to move to catch Locked up Rydell. It's not like this Rice team doesn't have talent. They've got a, up and down the lineup. We've got Walsh that came over from Ole Miss. Gallo from Clemson. Speaking of Gallo, there's a pop-up on the infield. Boast hanging with it. Makes the catch. Two outs. And a little easier sky tonight than what we saw earlier today. And that Texas Tech... Mission game. That was that was a circus when balls went up in the air. That bright bright blue sky that we have this morning.
There's the catcher, Manny Garza. He's going to send one out to right, dropping for a B6. Played back in. So Garza hit into a double play in the first. Gets a base hit here. He got that first pitch fastball, and it was down, but out over the plate. Nice job of hitting by Garza. He was one of those guys that finished well last year. Hit 414 after his return from injury and almost 60 at bats. So that gave him a bit of a boost from the end of last year into this season. Yeah, off to a decent start this year. Yes. There's Holderbach almost had a home run down the right field line in the second inning. Led off with a double. The ball rolled back to the infield. He stopped it second, and then he did not move the remainder of the inning. Well, gets away from Bard, but only Salazar will advance on a wild pitch. And a great read and jump by Salazar, second base. He immediately took off when he saw that ball hitting, hitting dirt. Hard able to keep it in front, but just kept it a little bit too far away from him. So runners on the corners, the two off, out back to our right. Ricocheting around the club level. And the back. One of those uh, D3 players making the jump to D1. It was D3 school to the World Series last year. Yeah, I love that. I mean, That's we talked about yeah. the bandits and the guys that have come from JUCO and earned their way to the Division One level, even if it's a year or two later than they would have hoped but uh, when you go to d3 i mean you're playing for the love of the game you're paying your own way there's no glamour whatsoever well, and then you get a chance to play here at a big league ballpark well, he's gonna get a degree from rice that even too. better right <laughs> even better he'll appreciate the latter later that's right <laughs> he'll appreciate the present now that's right really athletic first baseman Nice to put him in multiple positions, but he's solid defensively. That's a good pop. Harris is going to run. Here's the 3 2. That's ball four. The bases are full of outs. Yeah, you saw that once he go with that breaking ball 3 2, did not want to give in to Overback in that situation. There's Connor Walsh. Called the Rice basketball game Thursday night against FAU. It was the Owls and the Owls. Well, Nate Yeski out to the mound. His first visit tonight. Watson's been in pretty good control. Had the doubles and walked last inning. Worked out of it with three straight punch outs. A little bit more trouble this inning. Pitch counts creeping up there. 54 pitches. 35 strikes so far for Watson. ongoing. Eight nothing our score. AM with the lead. Rice trying to put their first run, if not more, on the board. They get the hot hitting Connor Walsh up. This is the guy that Rice wanted to get in his situation. One swing in the back and cut this lead in half for the Rice Owls. Walsh, one of the heroes last night, batting with the bases loaded. Big wave of the miss. Just a base hit. Maybe knocking in a couple of runs changes the complexion a bit of this game. Well, Bart's really been working hard behind the plate, too. Yeah, sometimes you get off the schneid, just break that zero and start to build a little momentum. Exactly what Michigan did earlier against Texas Tech. Tech out with a big lead. And Michigan just kind of chipped away, made the game close at the end. Walsh loaded up on that swing, came up empty. I think he bought himself another one of those. <laughs> no need to <laughs> try something different. I'm not trying anything different. Not when you swing and miss like that, that's, that's the pitch to get him out with. I'm with you. That one up. Sure did. And 
Looks like Cruz Jr. saying the same thing. Hey, we just need a couple runs here, man. Well, he's talking hitting, too. Yeah, he is. He's got those hands moving. We don't talk hitting stationary. Right? We're moving. 2-2 <laughs> two -two is cut in and missed. Welsh with Kay. Ron's in here to end the inning. His fifth strikeout. Rice leaves. The base is loaded. It's an 8-0 A&M advantage. Watch me. Watch me roll, grind, and spin. Playgrounds for wheels. That's always a win. One with my chair, but never held back. I do things sitting down most people standing can't hack. Some might say my condition was fate. My doctors would tell you I'm just redefining great. Watch me. Life-changing orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me roll, grind, and spin. Playgrounds for wheels. That's always a win. One with my chair, but never held back. I do things sitting down most people standing can't hack. Some might say my condition was fate. My doctors would tell you I'm just redefining great. Watch me. Life-changing orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. throwing in the bullpen last inning. And Urbancic was trying to end the frame. Zescota from Sealy. Aggies set to hit here in the bottom of the third inning with an eight to nothing advantage. He scored three in the first, five in the second. There's the numbers in a couple of appearances. For Zaskoda. This is his 40th career appearance. Active leader in appearances. Got a start in a doubleheader at Stanford. Hunter Haas will lead off this frame. Doubled in a run. He's been hit by a pitch. That first pitch at the belt. Haas will take upstairs. Then the Arizona State transfer. Got a Moss and a Haas, both from ASU. Playing in Aggie land now. Two and other count. Make it three of them. Not close. Well, for Jim Schlossnagel, a win this evening would be his 50th in a year plus in College Station. After all those wins at TCU, this team's certainly off to a good start at 8 nothing. 3 0 pitch from Zascota is in there for a strike. So, able to get his first. In that start at Stanford, he went an inning and two thirds. He's pitcher number three, used by the Owls. That's high, that's ball four. That seven walks tonight by Rice pitchers. Mix in a hit batter. Been a lot. A lot of free base runs. And for an offense struggling like a &M, Pat, you provide them some ammunition, some free base runners. That's when things can uh, get out of hand. Yeah, no doubt. Especially after the uh, offense we saw last night. Oftentimes, I just you hate to pitch against teams that get a little bit embarrassed, like what happened last night with uh, a against Louisville and. 
Yeah, you come out with a little bit extra motivation, and yeah, you certainly can't give free bases, and boy, it's really hurt uh, the Owls tonight. Sascota had some great success last season. Actually beat a in a start in College Station. Sent out in the right field, dropping for a base hit. Haas will hold it second, so the Haas and Haas combination both reach to begin the A&M third inning. Well, I would say so far, the experiment of uh, changing this lineup up has really worked in Coach Schlossnagel's favor. Does Austin boast only bat when he's got two teammates on base? Just saying, they have set the table for him well tonight, and he has produced double back in the first inning that gave him a couple of RBI and it's a shot again at it. Good pitch. Strike one. Right on the downside edge. Aggies had more runs than hits. But uh, one big swing here would score three more. Let's go back to our right in the upper deck. Let's go to pump it in fastballs 89 and 91 so far. Two strike pitch is a little bit off the corner, wanting to see a post will chase, and he did not. Just missed. So a walk and a single to begin this A&M third inning. Further off the corner. Oh, just push that split finger fastball. What's the velocity difference on that from his fastball? Yeah, that was about 75. So it acts like a changeup, but same pitch. Yeah, that was a no, that was fastball. Harder. Yeah. Went outside again with the fastball. I had him 2 Now he's run the count full. He might come unglued if he gets a pitch to hit. Big swings. Yeah. <laughs> the thing was down in the zone. Most had the home run in the midweek game against Houston Christian. And that blowout Aggie win. And he had the home run last night, so start the heat up. Hard hit. That's fair. Kicks off the sidewall. Chases home Haas. Most has another double and another RBI. So you go back over his last three games. That's 10 runs batted in. Yeah, that ball was just hammered. Looked like it was heading right up, uh, up and in on his hands. And, man, he has just got a quick bat. He's going to pull his hands in and shoot that ball down the line. Yep. Let's say Austin Boast is back. It's amazing. It takes just a couple of at-bats sometimes to flip that. That's, good. That's what happens. There's Targach. It's tripled, singled in a run. Yeah, baseball's a funny game when it comes to confidence. And a lot of players will tell you they're when they're going through kind of a slump or you know, a few bad appearances, they just say, yeah, you know, I'm still thinking right, still thinking the same. It's just not getting the results. And there's some guys that uh, mentally get down on themselves, and that's not Austin Boast. And there was never any doubt with his self-confidence. It was just a matter of time when he was going to come around. And, Coaches, uh, really good coaches have that intuition about their players when they start to see players pressing or trying to do too much. And you mentioned that earlier, Brett, and that certainly was not the case with Boast. That's a wave and a miss. Tarbach's done on strikes. Quite honestly, Pat, sometimes I think in today's day and age, maybe at the minor league level most, where well, managers really aren't even making out their own lineups. They're getting recommendations from the front office and this and that. It is still understanding your personnel. 
and picking the right day when you get a chance to rest somebody to get somebody else into the game to get him going to also then kickstart the guy a couple of days later to really kind of handle your person yeah, no doubt that's the uh, the gut feel for the game the part that uh, these statistics and analytics can't tell you about but yeah it's uh you know great coaches can look in their players eyes and know is the confidence there do they are they feeling it that's the part of the game you, you can't put into a computer one and one to Bob Gillette. Because then you get the guy off the bench who contributes. He's part of the team. He's feeling good if you need him. You rest the guy who might need a day. He comes back refreshed. Maybe gets back on track a couple of days later. Then everything is good. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, and that's that's the other part of the game is sometimes you also read when your players need a day off. They just need a mental break. Saw so foul ball back and out of play. It may mean that they're not, it's not. The issue may not be they're pressing, but they just need to take a breath and collect themselves. We've all been in those situations. Jose Cruz Jr. has been in plenty of those. He knows how to read his players. Ball and two strikes. Ground ball to the right side. Fielded by Gano. Going to flip one over the first. Ross is going to score. That's another A&M run. Bob Gillette gets an RBI. It's 10-0. And that was just really taking what the defense was giving you with the defense playing back. And on the left, flex the RBI ground out. The Aggies now with that 10 run lead. There's Caden Kent. Got an RBI and a ground out in the second. Struck out back in the first. He did not get cheated. A good fastball there by Vescota. Kent out of Lake Travis High School. Another one fouled back to our right. Dad played 19 years in the big leagues. Giants, Astros. Then the Dodgers, Mets, and Blue Jays. I kind of forget a few of those teams, but yeah. once you bring them back up. Yep. Yep. Five-time All-Star, National League MVP in 2000. And a contestant on Survivor. <laughs> that ball set out to left field, falling fast, base hit. Kent gets a single and an RBI. That's the 11 runs for a &M. you know, Great job of two strike hitting from Kent. Just kind of shorten that swing up a bit. Took a couple of wild swings there early in the count. This time stays nice and short. Gets his hands through the inside fastball. And nice job of fighting it off and get the base hit to left. Picks up an RBI and I think he's up by 11 now. A three-run inning, a five-run inning, and a three-run inning. For a &M. Hank Barr, the eighth. Maggie hit her to bat. Takes strike one. Softly hit, and an easy bounce for Gatto. He'll make the play. Tyrus Barr ends the inning. Three more score for AM. It's been all Aggies. And the 11 0 lead here at Minimate. What's his deal? Oh, him? He just got cash back shopping with Rackadin. Oh, I know the feeling. Cash back's where it's at. I just never dance in public. Mm -hmm. Here at the Astros Foundation, we strive to harness the passion of our fans to be a force for good in our community. Through key fundraising efforts like our Community Leaders Program and the Diamond Dreams Gala, we're able to redistribute millions of dollars back to support the community that supports us all season long. Log on to astros.com slash foundation to find out how you can affect positive change in our community. 2022 World Series Champion! 
It's one thing to reach the pinnacle and another to hold the throne. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, but we're used to the weight. We've built a legacy. Now, let's cement the dynasty. We're ready. There's some young Rice fans. Maybe some future owls. See themselves on the big board doing the YMCA. Having a good old time. <laughs> They're having a better time than their team right now. Oh, man. With an 11-0 lead. One thing is... Really has the benefit of quite a bit of run support as he goes back out there for a fourth. You know, the challenge with a big lead, as a lot of pitchers will tell you, is trying to kind of mentally trick yourself into pitching a 0-0 game. You tell yourself that knowing you've got this cushion behind you, so the challenge is, is keep focused and keep doing what, what Wansing has been doing. That's, that's his challenge. Max Johnson, the first hitter, takes strike one. Johnson, the Indiana transfer. Does that work? Can you trick yourself like that? You, you try, right? You, you <laughs> tell yourself this is the situation. That's what I thought. <laughs> Mind over map. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Well, you, you, you also tell yourself to keep pitching your game, you know. So, you know, a lot of teams would, would get upset, you know, if you're not throwing fastballs. You know, you're up by 10 runs. Why aren't you throwing more fastballs? Well, because I'm pitching my game. I'm, I'm sticking with what... I know is successful and I'm not going to change the way I approach the hitter just because I've got a bigger lead. A little bit like the basketball team that's down 20 at the half and coach says don't even look at the score. Just play. Don't even that's look. Right. You know, but you're like, well, yeah. we're, we're cutting into that deficit. What is it? No. Down to 14, down to 12, down to 10. Yeah, you see it in basketball all the time. Right? There's that, that psychological thing that you, know, you get that big lead, you just relax a little bit. Foul back again. You do that in baseball on the mound, that's when you start to get lit up. Wave and a miss. That's strikeout number six for the Purdue transfer, Troy Wansing. Yeah, not many healthy swings on that breaking ball You're from right. Wansing. It's, it's really hard, that tight spin curveball. It's almost three quarters of a swing when you're already going to be late yeah we, we've seen about uh, four or five of those type swings it's just uh you know the guys like to call them swords but that's what you're seeing is these half swings because they're not picking up the spin great west the batter katie tompkins product did not miss by much yeah fastball down and away Wave and a miss. That's another one of those swings. No contact made. Tag applied. West will K. That's seven strikeouts. They're piling up for one singing. Just continues to pressure these rice hitters with that nasty breaking ball. You had a pitcher earlier today in Molina for Texas Tech who struck out 11. That's right. Pitch to Rosengard is outside. Ferrone for Louisville struck out nine and in seven innings at our middle game, but at one point he retired 18 straight. Oh, this is some great pitching performances today. And even yesterday, Connor O'Halloran struck out 10 in a loss for Michigan against Ryan Vanderhei, six quotas for TCU. Bases empty, two outs in the fourth inning. And some guys that have taken some steps in terms of earning more starts, for own being one of those guys for Louisville. Rice did lead the bases loaded in the third. Wansing was able to escape. In the air, 
towards the corner and left. And nicely done. Catch was made. Yep. Uh, well, perfect inning. Three and a half complete. It's been all Texas A&M this evening. People want to be a player or a coach, but they don't know the behind the scenes people who like the video coordinator and the athletic trainer who has a science background but also loves basketball and community relations and all of the different areas where you can take what you're good at, whether it's science or reading or math, and apply it if you have a you know love for sports. My dad was an M NBA coach, so I wanted to be him. And I ended up being an NBA coach, but there's a bunch of stuff that you can do in sports if you have the education and then the love of the game. I grew up in a time where there was no access to behind the scenes in sports. And so to have a, a head coach like Steven Silas that's as passionate about providing that exposure to uh, young up and coming athletes, young up and coming future professionals and future creatives and businessmen and businesswomen, it's, a, it's an awesome honor and privilege for me to be a part of it. So, I think I've decided my favorite basketball genre is classic hard block. Or maybe arena block? Or soft block? I'll even get down on some country block, provided that country is Turkey. 11 nothing. Texas A&M leads ranks as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Want to encourage you to make those donations to Shriners Children. You can go to collegeclassic.org. We're at 20% right now of our fundraising goals, so we're working in the right direction. There's more work to be done. Help contribute to a great cause. Fans enjoying the Shriners Children's College Classic. Back to the mound is Sascota for another inning of relief facing Kaysen Wells, number nine hitter. Rice's last win against AM was a couple of years ago. It was 2 1. Sascota and a couple of relievers combined in a two hitter. He went five and a third innings, giving him just one hit. Guy Garibay Jr. went three for four, and Rice would like to get him back. Oh, boy. Too. Yeah, it's been a big loss in that lineup for Rice. One of the guys he were really counting on for a big season, and unfortunately, he jumped into the wall against Stanford a couple of weekends ago. Stop and doing that. Yeah, busted his shoulder, and so he is uh, trying to get that shoulder healthy again. Tell you what, the Walls usually win. They do, yeah. Rip it a miss by Wells. Even with this padding, man, we've, uh, we've seen some pretty good collisions here this weekend. Some great catches in the outfield. We've seen some incredible plays. A little bloop to left, and it'll fall. Front of Salazar. Well, the TCU guys come to mind. Austin Davis had an incredible catch yesterday, and then the Warriors with one in left field today. Yes. Both up against the padding. Nice swing by Case and Wills. Got an inside outset pitch and punches it to left field for the knock. It was asked Coda, and that comes off the bat. You're thinking, I might get it out, and then it drops. So back to the top of this lineup, and Tracy. Pull the trigger late on that curveball. Tracy's over two, but he scored two runs. Well, he's had two swings. Once he's pulled the trigger, I'm thinking, my goodness, did I just do that? <laughs> well, that fastball from both his hands. Locks him up. Yeah, the gun for Saskota, his fastball is about 89, 91. It, it seems harder. Some of these swings the Yankees are taking. It's, it's got some deceptiveness with that fastball. They've had at least three hits in that same spot. They sure have. Tracy with the single. Wells will go to third. Runners on the corners, nobody out. And that time, Tracy gets the breaking ball down in the zone. And 
Bear that ball up well. Not a good 0-2 pitch. Got too much of the plate. Problem is for Zascota, you see a couple of guys on, and then you realize it's the Haas, Moss, and Boast yeah. portion of this lineup. Yeah, face the beat here. Haas has doubled. He's been hit by a pitch. He's walked. He's scored three runs. We're in the fourth inning. It's a good pitch in there for a strike. Nothing in two. Couple of singles to begin the Aggie fourth inning. Make that three singles to begin the inning. Another run will score. It's a good read by Tracy, and he motors to third base. It's 12 nothing. Garrett Zascota's doing a good job of working ahead of Aggie hitters. He's just not able to close them out. Second hit in a row. 0 2 pitches just out over the middle of the plate. Yeah, those are painful. Yeah. It's, uh, might have one of those every once in a while, but not two in a row. Here's Jack Moss. Two singles, couple to run scored. Knocked in a run. Yeah, now you're at the point of the game where Rice is definitely not going to concede the game at this point. Still a lot of game left, but you start thinking ahead to tomorrow with your bullpen and that's already thin with a couple of their arms down with some early season soreness, so bullpen management is going to be key for them. Indeed. Well, there have been one little flare after another this inning. Another base hit, third for Moss, another run. That's a Baker's dozen. A lucky 13 for a &M. and It's amazing how these types of hits just become contagious. We talked about the ground balls between second and first that just snuck through the infield and then you know, a couple of players, one to right center, one to left. It's amazing how he's come in bunches in baseball. You just kind of see that. Just wonder how does that work? So a couple of games ago to your point, AM defeated HCU 23-0. They were in danger of losing 14-0 last night before they got five runs late. And they're leading 13 nothing to see. Yeah. Does make you wonder. I think last night had a lot to do with the pitching staff that Louisville threw up there. Sure after. Did. Austin Boast shoots one straight up the side. Infield fly is called. And Rydell will put it away. Rice was going to get it out one way or another there. Yep. Yeah, Ryan Hawks threw a gem and of course, Evan Webster came in to clean it up, but you know, that was an outstanding start. That's why you, you hear these head coaches all the time talk about how important starting pitching is on any given day. You have a starter that uh, is lights out, and they could beat anybody. Of course, Louisville will be in that early game tomorrow against Michigan. They have a chance to get out of here going 3 0, waiting a long time to be a part of this event. Who's Targon? Well, Dan McDonald could just say, Hey, guys, I told you so. Told you. <laughs> They'll be wearing their Muhammad Ali uniforms tomorrow after wearing their Astros unis today to get the win. That was a well-played 3-2 contest. Yeah, in the great game. game. The TCU. Great game. A mile-high fly ball bending down the line in right, and this will be in the seats. This Rosen guard gave pursuit. That gentleman's thrilled with his acquisition. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had a couple of 3-2 games, of course. Rice with the win over Tech on the first game of the tournament on that same score. And then, of course, earlier today, that was an outstanding game. You can go a long time back in today's day and age without seeing a pitcher set down each team straight hit. Yeah, especially the college game. So difficult. Sometimes it's not even your fault. Somebody's going to kick a ball behind you. Maybe hit somebody. That's well placed outside corner strike, too. 
Yeah, Greg Ferrone was just lights out for Louisville. That is a dangerous team. Mr. Dolan, I think we're going to see more of uh, Louisville down the road. They've got a pretty complete offensive lineup. And the question mark coming into the season was uh, just the starting rotation who was going to settle in. Well, Dan McDonald was uh, the difference. I think it's a fun program just because of their insistence on development. You know, we're not going to go out there and raid every mid-major and hit the transfer portal. We're going to keep developing our guys. We know if we do our job right, we'll lose them after three years, and we'll just find the next. Yeah, I sure love that philosophy. Not a lot of coaches are are sharing that same philosophy, but uh, certainly one that you would you'd want to have a, a college coach that, you know, if you were thinking about where, do, where would I send my son to go play and, and who would he play for? And there's a handful of coaches I, I would trust you know, that really care about the kids and develop them. Yeah. Mile high fly ball to right. Does Rosengard see this? He does. <laughs> Just had to wait a while. He held his hands down. out to his side. That gave us all pause. Two more runs. Hey, Alex going to join us when you come back. Watch me. Watch me paddle, carve, and drop in. The water is my canvas. Let the good times begin. Perfect sets and barrels I chase. Where sand becomes surf, waves set the pace. A childhood accident couldn't ruin my vibes. Thanks to one special place, I've never been more alive. Watch me. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. It's a 13-0 Texas A&M lead over the Rice Owls, and this is the point of the night. We always look forward to the one and only, the patient ambassador, a man who needs no introduction, but I'll give you one anyhow. This is Alec. We've been doing this for, what, six years? Six Maybe longer? Six years, seven years, I think. Yep. I've lost count, honestly. All right, tonight, <laughs> before the game, you go down and introduce the coaches. You interview them on the field. Jim Schlossnagel, who's become a good friend of yours, asks Aggie Nation to give you a standing ovation what did that feel like yeah you know it, it was really cool um coach lost and i we built a really good friendship he's given me a lot of support a lot of advice in uh, my journey and it was really kind of him to take uh time to just thank me and uh, i appreciate everyone here who's been in the stands who's been supporting their favorite teams supporting shriners children's and uh, it's not about me this weekend it's about these amazing college teams just you know doing something good for Shiner's children, and I just can't thank them all enough. Yeah, hey Alec, it's, uh, you know, you are the veteran of the Shriner staff in terms of just the marketing and, and getting the brand noticed and, and uh, out there in the public. Why do you keep doing it? Um, I believe in the mission, honestly, and so does my family. Um, to help kids with rare medical conditions, regardless of their family's ability to pay, or regardless of their uh, insurance status, is, it's, it's huge. In, in my opinion, I think that's something a lot of people can really resonate with. I think people and kids especially with disabilities deserve the best care that um, they can receive. Um, and Shriners Children, they helped me for over 20 years and I want to help them help more kids all around the world. Um, what would you do for the people that gave you the most, right? Or that's right. For the people that gave you everything. Yep. Shriners Children, they gave me everything and I just want to help them as much as I can. Rydell grounds out, second out of the inning. How many surgeries have you had in your life? I'm 20 years old. I've had uh, 20 surgeries, and I think I've broken over 60 bones. Oh, my goodness. Wow. But that hasn't stopped me. It you is know, not. I, uh, 
I'm in my third year at Northwestern University. Uh, I'm majoring in journalism, and I hope to one day be a sports broadcaster and maybe be an in-studio host. So. Hopefully I can make things happen. <laughs> well, Pat, he's a national TV spokesperson. We've seen him on the NBA on TNT. He's yep. here on a regular basis. I'm not sure what he hasn't done yet. <laughs> That's right. He's well on his way. Yeah. Yep, so school's going well, I imagine. School's going well, but as we all know, school is school. It could be better, and it could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer, Alex. <laughs> hey, you got a good basketball team, though, this year at Northwestern. They're scrappy. It's, it's hard to stop a tough team that plays hard every game. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they hopefully they can make a nice run in March, and we'll see after that. Now, are you getting some opportunities to hone your skills at the Northwestern. I am. Uh, Northwestern, they've given me a lot of opportunities. Uh, I wanted to go there. I wanted to learn from the best. I wanted to be around the best, and I wanted some of the best opportunities. And Northwestern, they've really given me a lot of really cool opportunities. And this summer, I hope to continue in Indiana with something, something really cool. <laughs> Is that a tease? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that's a real good tease. <laughs> He's already got that down. Count goes full. Couple of quick outs here in the top of the fifth inning. 13 nothing a and A&M with the lead. It's going to be a little cue shot to second base. We're not going to let Alec get out of here just yet. We're bringing him back. He's coming back for another frame. It has been all A&M to this point. We're here on the campus today of Rice University in Houston so that our patient, Carter, can have a chance to meet the Rice Owl baseball team. Mid to late afternoon on October 4th, 2016, my wife picks the kids up in the afternoon, came home, um, got him out of the car in his car seat, put him up on the, the countertop like she always does, ran to the back of the house to use the bathroom. And I heard his blood curling scream. Um, in the restroom, so I came running, and all I did is I saw his car seat engulfed in flames with him stuck in it. We ended up at Shriners at about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning after his accident, um, after bouncing around in a couple different hospitals. Seeing him and just his joy as he's playing baseball is, makes me happy just to see him and just to see that he has a place on this team in this in this locker room on that field. It's just uh, truly a blessing. Shriners Hospitals for Children provide the best care for patients with burns that you'll find anywhere in the world. I know that Shriners um, theme is live a life without limits and he, Carter lives a life without limits because of Shriners sitting in the hospital I could never fast forward six years and know that we would be here and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Shriners help provide life-changing care to children who need your help by logging on to collegeclassic.org and for each $100 donation, get a free Marucci mini bat. And with a $250 or more donation, get a free full-size Marucci bat. Go to collegeclassic.org and donate today. He's done this before. This is a total game changer. And this is the bat right here. Yeah. Not a bad looking piece of lumber. $250 after that promo by Alex. I like it. We're going to keep him around just to do promos for the remainder of the weekend, even though I know he has to go back to school <laughs> at some point. Alec has been a fan favorite for this event for many years. You've interviewed coaches. You've interviewed a lot of the patients, I think, between innings, which has been nice for the fans to be able to have your perspective interviewing some fellow Shriners patients. Absolutely. Uh, Shriners Children's, they help kids with rare medical conditions and, and it, that's all sorts of kids uh, in every corner of the world so it's uh it's really cool this, to meet these patients Caden Kent is going to lead off the bottom of the fifth inning I'm curious and that one is lying past the third baseman Rydell and it's going to be another base hit for Caden Kent I'm curious how often you get recognized. I get all, I get recognized a lot. Um, you know, it's funny. It's not like the first thing I tell people when I meet them that I do commercials for Shriners Children's. Um, 
I'm extremely proud of it, and I love talking about it, but, you know, I want them to get to know Alec Habakungan. Um, and so sometimes, right, I, I'll be in Chicago, I'll be on campus, and I'll be with some friends who don't know that I'm on these commercials, and I'll get recognized by someone, <laughs> and they'll they'll just look at me, and they're like, Alec, like, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> New pitcher, by the way, Pat, is J.D. Gregson, also pinch hits this inning. Yeah, this is Mark Perkins. And uh, he takes over for Garrett Zascota. There's a chopper foul. So how do you manage everything between your workload at Northwestern and some of the appearances you make at these big events for Shrine? Yeah, I, I have an amazing support system with my family. Uh, Shrine is children, so they help me every step of the way. Uh, so, you know, they're not loading up my schedule too much, um, and I'm really getting a good education at Northwestern. I'm not compromising any of it at all. Um, so I, I'm, I've been able to handle it. You know, I've, uh, there have definitely been some tough days, for sure, but uh, I've prevailed. So I've dealt with a lot more difficult things in my life when right. it comes to challenges, especially in the hospital. So uh, I, I can get a couple of papers done pretty quickly. <laughs> Case and Wells, the batter. So you're not sneaking out and going to Wrigley Field for an afternoon game when you have class. We're right? not going None to Wrigley Field right now, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little too cold anyway, but, uh, yeah, baseball season is here. Well, Alec, we've talked about future plans. You want to get into broadcasting. Is there any particular sport you enjoy more than, than others? Well, I played wheelchair basketball for eight years, um, and I really enjoy just basketball. Um, so... Of course, I'd love to do anything in basketball, but I, I really do have a passion to help um, bring more awareness to adaptive sports, honestly. Um, it helped me for over eight years. I had the opportunity to play in college, but I decided to go to Northwestern where they don't provide adaptive sports. Um, and so after college, I think I want to continue to help more kids and bring more awareness to wheelchair basketball, wheelchair softball, uh, wheelchair football, and now sled hockey as well. So. Uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity with the Paralympics, and um, unfortunately, in this country, we haven't, we don't really talk about adaptive sports. We don't recognize it as you know, a sport like the other professional sports. So, uh, I think there's some work to be done there, and uh, I hope to bring some more awareness. Well, that's awesome, Alec. You can uh, be the national spokesperson for a couple of different organizations. Right. Right. Yes. I'm busy. I'm glad I'm only 20. So. <laughs> Well, I heard this guy named Ernie Johnson uh, may have, uh, maybe be able to help you sometime in the future. Foot race to the base, <laughs> close, but out, there's two gone. Alec joining us up here for a second inning. I don't know how many times we've been doing this, Pat. This is probably our, I don't know, 11th, 12th different interview with Alec, sometimes multiple times. I think so, yeah. Weekend. Never become, gets old. It's become our tradition <laughs> in early March. It's always fun. I mean, we try to find new things to talk about. That's it's, right. It's my job to fill in that gap during the year so that you guys have some great questions. Well, I like how yeah. you think. <laughs> so you taking got, the load off our plate. <laughs> yeah, you, you do. And you've got uh, you've got multiple things going on. Obviously, you, you're a spokesperson for Shriners. You've got school going on. And I love the, the talk about the adaptive sports. What, what other hobbies are you into? Um, you know, I like <laughs> I like watching good movies. <laughs> nice. I like yeah. going to Lake Michigan and getting cold for no reason. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, I spend a lot of time with my family. I have three older sisters, and oh, they sweet. always, uh, you know, they always annoy me. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I, I just I do what I can for the people that I love, and uh, I really do love philanthropy. I love sports, and uh, you know, I don't love school, but it's occupying a lot of my time. <laughs> well, there you now. go. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, that means you're normal. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's great, Alan. And obviously a great ambassador for Shriners Hospitals with not only his story, but his ability to, to share that over many platforms and different events for many, many years. And I, I got a feeling, Alec, you're going to continue to do this in one capacity or another for the rest of your life. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, my name will always be synonymous with Shriners Children's. Uh, what they did for me for over 20 years what we've done together for over, what, like eight years now. It's, we made magic together and, uh, you know, I just, I want to continue to help as much as I can in any way possible. Yeah. Well, you've been a tremendous spokesperson, Alec, and it's uh, always been a pleasure for, I know, for Brett and I to know you and 
And every time uh, you pop up one of those commercials, and my family says, hey, that's that's <laughs> Dad's friend. We did the same thing. <laughs> There's a bouncer towards second. The Aggies, for the first time tonight, are not going to score. Alec, thanks for the visit again, Thank and we can't guys. wait to do it one more time. Appreciate you guys. There he is, the one and only Alec. We'll be right back to Minute Maid. Being the new face of Don't Mess With Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. Thanks. I'll never litter, Joe. Don't Mess With Texas means don't litter. You gotta come to play. Then prove it. You gotta want it more. There's Ethan again. Then take it. One race to the rack. You gotta set the bar high. You gotta be willing to leave it all on the court. Then earn it. The you gotta believe in those you go to battle with. Then bring it. Depending on who is on the offensive side of the ball, you gotta be ready for their first move, second move, third move, fourth move. I'm gonna focus on, you know, kind of where he's hot at, the spots he's trying to get to. It's really whatever time he's on. I respond with the same energy. There's just so much things that have to go through your mind, and you only have a couple seconds to process it. Astros take on Venezuela Wednesday at 4.30 on AT&T Sportsnet. Tell you what, this thing got cranked up early in the first inning when Texas A&M put three runs on the board. They had several extra base hits. Wild pitch, of course, didn't hurt either. That played in Haas. This big swing rolled all the way to the fence off the bat of Targach in at third base. Then the second inning, Pat, it got a little worse with five runs against the Rice Owls. Yeah, early on it was the power of the AM offense that was really doing the job on Mauricio Rodriguez, the starter for Rice, but then as the game wore on, there was a combination of walks and just well-placed hits. A couple of uh, errors opened the gates as well, so it's just been a... Uh, the floodgates open in about that second inning, and Aggies have never looked back. Now have built this 13-0 lead here against Rice as we enter the sixth inning. I think we got a new pitcher as well for A&M. It's Justin Lampkin. After Wansing went five strong innings. Give it up the four hits. Gates pumping some strikes to Manny Garza. Three, four, and five do up for the Owls this frame. Give you the light on Lansing. Just two walks, seven strikeouts for those. Five scoreless, 83 pitches. Yeah, Lansing was, was solid. Making these... Uh, bust out wins like this it's there's a challenge for starting pitchers to stay focused and in the zone and Watson did a great job of that tonight really pitched a clean five innings like you said Brent only the four hits and two walks uh, left-handed pitcher Justin Lampkin takes over and, and one of those newcomers to the Aggie staff that could work his way into the rotation Struck out the first man he faced. Here's Holderbach. He's got a ton of upside. Fastball that sits 93-94. Really sharp slider. Good changeup. Here's the changeup. Working with a new catcher as well. I think Gregson stayed in behind the plate. Third different Aggie catcher we've seen in a couple of games. Ground ball to second. Easy play for both. Two outs. Mm -hmm. 
Well, J.D. Gregson, the new Aggie catcher, started out at Baylor and then transferred to Grayson Community College. Ends up at AM. He's got the wristband to watch on. Here's Connor Walsh. He'll take strike one. Walsh has walked and struck out. Four hits for Rice this evening. Still trying to figure out how many years we've been interviewing Alan. <laughs> At least six, right? Yeah, I think it's closer to seven or eight. I think you're right. Time flies. Yeah. Gosh, it's hard to believe when he first started coming to this tournament, he was about 12, 13 <laughs> years old. A couple of quick outs here in the top of the sixth inning in Lampkin. It's even up the count of two and two to Walsh. Yeah, he's just been a strike throwing machine. Just missed up top. Thirteen nothing, Texas A&M. They were finally kept off the scoreboard last frame. Well, Coach Losh really likes this pitching staff. He says that the, the ceiling is high, of course, but the floor has been raised. He said even losing guys like Palish and Lou Menifee. First Jacob Palish drafted and gone. Both those guys. But do they have added some quality arms? Lampkin being one of those. And I think Lampkin's got a shot to enter the rotation at some point. At least as a midweek guy. Well, he is looking awfully tough. Ground ball up the middle. Post. Cannot make a play. No throw. So Walsh gets the base hit. Two out single. Good job by both to get over and knock it up, knock it down, but could not get back to his feet quick enough. So Max Johnson will bat. Struck out on a couple of previous ABs. Pop one up towards the shortstop. Haas drifting out on the grass. A little bit of a stumble. <laughs> he caught the ball, and Tracy caught him. And the inning ends. Five and a half complete. All in. in. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing race with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing race with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Texans are saving big with TXU Energy Season Pass. 50% off energy charges all winter and summer. I saved $450 last year. Best move I ever made. You still got it, Dad. You've also got the TXU Energy app, where you can track your savings anytime. Now that's a win. And that's a big win. You keep dancing, I'll keep saving. With Season Pass, everybody wins. TXU Energy. Energy for everything. The 2023 Shriners Children's College Classic is presented by Shriners Children's. Go to collegeclassic.org to donate today. By Demand Science. Let's make your job easier. And by Honda. Ah, the skyline, downtown H-Town. And this Saturday night, bring you back inside Minute Maid Park. 13 runs on 13 hits for Texas A&M. Hunter Haas is going to lead off. Well, the Aggies, they put on a good show tonight. Bouncing back from that tough loss last night. Talk to Slosh about the uh, frustrations that 
some of the fans have had with the uh, early season performances and you know, he's uh, such a great philosopher when it comes to understanding the game and how he communicates about it he said you know it's baseball man it's uh you know, things happen in the game it's a tough game it's a hard game and he said it's uh the unfortunate thing in, in some regards is that we've set the bar so high now in his first year as an Aggie coach taking the team to the World Series last year and he said I get it the expectations are there but you know he says I hope the fans can manage some of those expectations as as well we're, you know, we've got a lot of young players and fresh faces in this lineup and we're going to take our lumps early on but new left fielder Devaney. the ball will find you quickly won't it <laughs> it's not even in the game well Jacob good game Devaney yep went into a dive and the double for Haas I think Salazar moved to center I would say, speaking for SEC fan, as we see this again, Devaney with an all-out effort, almost played that off his forehead on a bounce. Yeah, he did. Nice we, job of keep it in front, but we don't handle expectations well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> SEC. <laughs> yeah. We want you to win tonight. We want you to win tomorrow. We want you to win next week. But uh, no, his points are good. Hey, no time to get better. No time for development. It's it's a win now. Stanley Tucker is going to pinch hit. A Lamar consolidated high school product. Through New Mexico Junior College. It's going to be a thrill for Stanley Tucker. This could be the last inning for the Aggies to bat, so we might see a few more pinch hitters. Travis Chestnut on deck. Schlossnagel might be able to empty his bench. Flair to right, hanging up. It's going to be caught. Wilson guard with the grab, plays it back in. Off the bat, Tucker probably thought he had a minute made park single, but it would not fall. Well, good contact from Tucker. Man, it's tough. You sit there all night waiting for your chance. And you put a good swing on it. Travis Chestnut is now going to bat for a ghost in Pflugerville through Temple College. Craig McMurtry still at Temple? I think so. There's a chopper over near the Rice dugout. Yeah, Craig's been there a long time, but I think he's still there. Former Astro Ranger pitcher, right? I'm not so sure he wasn't second in the rookie of the year one season to one Barry Bonds. I could be wrong on that. Yeah. Does he power the Braves as well, I believe? One on, one out, one ball, one strike. Perkins out there for a second inning. Salazar moved from left to center, and he's still drifting back. Make that grab. That'll be an advancement to third base by Haas. Two outs. A couple of pretty good swings off the bench. The There's Targach. Tripled back in the first, knocked in a couple of runs with a single in the second. Struck out his last two ABs. That ball lifted in the air, rather deep center. Salazar back nearing the wall, a jump catch. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. Wasn't exactly sure where that wall was. He knew he was getting close to it. But a nice job by Salazar. Moving over from left field to center, makes a couple of nice catches here. And the Aggies are through in the sixth. They maintain the 13 0 lead over the Rice Owls. I depend on my car, so I take care of it with parts from rockauto.com. Everything I need to know is at Rock Auto. My car isn't rare, but when I fix it myself, it's special. All the parts your car will ever need, Rock Auto. Today we're here at Texas A&M welcoming Addison, one of our Shriners patients. And Addison had a fabulous time meeting all the Texas A&M players. When I was 10 years old, I was in the back of my grandpa's truck. 
with the rifle on the layout behind the seat. He had a bump. The bullet went through the leg. Went to the hospital, tried to save it, but they couldn't. So they decided to amputate it. We get a phone call. He's from uh, a Shriner from Eagle Pass. And he heard about our story, and he wanted us to help. They provided everything for us, food, lodging, everything. First week, I went to Shriners. I went to Richard, and I came back walking out. It was great to meet Addison. Just getting to watch him take BP on the field was, was super awesome. Personally, I've been a part of something where you have something traumatic happen to your family, and that kind of foundation that the Shriners gives the family, you literally can't put a price tag on what Shriners does. Shriners will provide the care regardless of the family's ability to pay. This is my fifth prosthesis. I've gone at least 20 times. I can't fully express that I do not know where we would have been without Shriners' support and help. Yeah. Here's your College Classic scoreboard presented by Electronic Merchant Systems. Price won the opener 3-2. Then Louisville had the big win over these Aggies. Louisville a 3-2 victory over TCU earlier today. Tech won the first game this morning 10-7. TCU blanked Michigan. That was game two. We're going left to right rather than up and down. I'll get you all the scores one way or another, Pat, but uh, we're about to see a conclusion possibly of game number six possible run rule is uh, Aggies bring on another new pitcher in the top of the seventh inning leading by 13. Yeah, hard to believe we're almost two thirds of the way through the tournament. But, man, what a beautiful venue. The weather has been just perfect this weekend. Slight breeze out of the south now. The flags are blowing out to left center, left field. And there's a shot of Josh Stewart in relief of Justin Lampkin. Stewart wearing number 34. You wear 34 in Texas. That yes. means something. You better believe it means dad has a couple of favorites. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stewart on in his second appearance. Struggled a bit in his first one. Had a third of an inning. Gave up a hit. A couple of runs. It's good to see Schlosh get some more work for his... You're on the right hander Josh Stewart. Look at our crew putting that 34. Nolan Ryan up on the screen. Kerry Wood was a 34. About a thousand others through the high school ranks and through the ranks. It's Graydon West bats. Not a comfortable swing. I will say it's unique, though, for a guy like Josh Stewart. How many pitchers, for that matter, players or athletes at any sport can say they were both a Longhorn and an Aggie? He was at Texas last year. Yeah, how about that? That takes some guts. I mean, you've got to clean your closet out. I mean, you can't have any remnants. You can't reach in and go to, you know, run to the store and throw on the Longhorn shirt from a year ago. That's right. You just can't do it. Fully committed. Two strike pitches high. Get in a quick workout wearing an old shirt. Can't do it. Yep, yep. I get it. Originally from Georgetown, Texas. So, you know, honoring his native roots there, but he saw the light. <laughs> you probably remember his cousin Cole Stewart as well. I do. Fourth overall pick in the 2013 draft. With good heritage and good fastball. Sit 93 94. 2 2 pitch. That is strike three. Well, we definitely like the stuff of Josh Stewart. Just a matter of him settling in and getting comfortable with his location. The coaches talk about uh, just play where your feet are. That's, uh, his feet are firmly planted in College Station now. And good start tonight on that strikeout looking of West. Rosen guard the batter. Now it's down to their final two. Possible run rule situation. AM went from nearly being run ruled 14 0 last night, scoring five to play the duration of the nine, to trying to run rule Price this evening. That's spanked to center. The clock. Tracy with the grab, two outs. Yeah, I think Tracy took one step to his <laughs> <He> left. Hit <laughs> right at him. Well struck, though. Up the battle Rosa card. Christian Salazar 
in. He has one of the five base hits for the house tonight. Nice able to get that win last night. Early yesterday, in fact, against Texas Tech. About to be one and one in the classic, as will AM. That one tattooed the foul. Louisville. They've won both of their games. TCU a win and a loss. Michigan trying to get their win tomorrow, and they will open up against the uh, Cardinals. That's the 11 05 game. It's going to be a swing. Alice down to their final strike. Race and TCU will be the second game tomorrow. Maggie's will be in the nightcap against Texas Tech. That's a fun way to That'll be a good one. Yep. Chopper up the middle. That was quite a job by Stewart just to bend out of the way. Salazar got his first career hit earlier. He's two for three. Oh, nice job there. Two strikes swinging him. This one right back up the box. Stewart almost nabbed that. It almost nabbed him. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Here's Rydell 0 for 3. A couple of ground outs. A&M, of course, not holding Salazar at first. He can do whatever he wants. Well, that is some smooth heat. Nice compact mechanics. Good release. Strike two. Outside one. Again, race down to its final strike. Stewart's next pitch, buried in the dirt. Rexon again, the third catcher used this weekend, smothered it. Nice job by Gregson. Salazar not wanting to move from first base. Of course, nice needs a lot of base runners, but just play it safe over there. That one lifted the left into the corner. Wells nearing the wall. The ball hits off the fence. And Salazar is going to score from first. And Rice avoids the shutout. They're on the board. Then scoring double off the Crawford boxes. Well struck. Pretty good pitch. Ball tailing away from Rydell. And just goes with the pitch. Valiant effort out there by Wells. Ball just over the top of his glove. And We've seen oftentimes when that ball hits the Crawford wall, it bounces towards the infield, and Hunter Haas has to go corral it, get it back in. Here's Pierce Gallup. He singled back in the first one of the seven hits now for the Rice Owls. Stewart's really yanked those last two. Yeah. You trying to overthrow? I think so. Maybe the, the breaking ball, the first pitch. And that time just kind of carried across his body. Gets the aggressive swing to it on. Big rip by Gallo. And Gallo knew that fastball was coming. Still got behind it. Well, for the third time this inning, race down to its final strike. The previous two times they've come through with hits. That's been a pretty good formula. And we'll see if Stewart goes back to that off-speed pitch. A little bit up. Wow. Could have. 
<laughs> Count's gone full. And that's going to be strong. Now he gives it to him. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the ball game. AM and wins it 13 to 1. Gavin may have gotten one. He wasn't about to get a second. You know, I standing rebound for the Texas A&M Aggies, and we come back with a vengeance tonight. Score the 13 runs. They did it bunches, and the you know, Aggie offense can be electric at times. and see if this is the catalyst to get them back on track. Big win for the Aggies. A&M now 6-4 with the victory. They'll play in the night game against Texas Tech. That's going to be a fun one. Tomorrow night, another great day of baseball. Here in downtown Houston, 11 a.m. We'll kick it off with Michigan and Louisville. So for Pat Combs, I'm Brett Dolden saying so long. Once again, our final score, A&M defeats Rice 13 to 1. Join us tomorrow for day three of the Shriners Children's College Classic at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. Michigan taking on number 14, Louisville. So long and good night from Houston. Promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath. Do you solemnly swear? It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're